Hello, I hope you're doing well. In the last couple episodes, we've been talking about Arduino shields and that type of thing. We're going to shift gears here, and we're going to talk about using a single input to trigger multiple Arduinos. So, imagine a scenario where you have a bunch of hungry, crying babies. They're all crying at you at the same time. And, you know, you want to, like, pull your hair out and throw babies and all that. You don't really want to do that. So, you want to stop all this crying immediately, but you only have one bottle of milk. So, I mean, you could try feeding each baby a little bit of milk at a time. You know, you give one baby some milk, then another baby, another baby, so on. But this really doesn't stop the crying because only one kid gets the bottle at once, so the rest are all crying. So one solution that might keep the babies all quiet at the same time would be to build a system that would distribute the milk from one bottle to all the babies at the same time. All right, now let's talk about a similar problem and solution related to Arduino. Let's say you have two Arduinos and both of them are part of the same project, but you only have one button. And when you press the button, you want both of the Arduinos to do something at the same time. So basically, what you want to do is trigger two or more Arduinos with a single button press. Okay, so like an example of this might be you have an Arduino that has an LCD shield attached to it for displaying information. And then you have another Arduino that controls an LED matrix. And so when you press a button, you want the LCD to do something at the same time that the uh, LED matrix is doing something. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and set up a much simpler circuit. What we'll do is have two Arduinos, and each one will have an LED hooked up at pin 13 through a 220 ohm resistor. Now, on a breadboard between the two Arduinos, we'll have a single momentary push button. So the first thing we're going to do is establish a common ground between our Arduinos. So we've got these long rails on either side of the breadboard and the one with the blue line next to it, I'll just use that as my common ground. So I'm going to connect the ground from the Arduino on the left to the breadboard and then I'm going to connect the ground on the right to that same rail on the breadboard. So what we've done is established a common ground between both Arduinos. So now what we'll do is we'll connect that common ground rail to one side of the push button. Now, in this example, I'm going to be using pin 2 to trigger our Arduino. So basically, when I press the button, I want pin 2 to see ground voltage, quote unquote, see ground voltage. So what I'll do now is connect a jumper wire from each pin 2 on the Arduinos to either side of that push button. Now, keep in mind that the push buttons, this type of momentary push button, it's electrically connected at the top and at the bottom. So you can think of that as one continuous wire. So basically I'm connecting pin two of each Arduino together and then both of those to that top of that push button. Now that's pretty much it for the circuit. So what's going to happen when we press the button is both pin twos on each Arduino will be electrically connected to ground. So again, you might say that they would see ground voltage. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into the code and finish this up. So here I am in the Arduino IDE, and what I'm going to do is open up an example for turning on an LED when you're pressing a button. So all we have to do is go up to File, Examples, Digital, Button. And these examples are built in all the Arduino IDEs. So here we are uh, with this button sketch. And the way this sketch is written, the way the circuit is supposed to be set up, is so that you have pin 2 on an Arduino connected to 5 volts through a push button. So every time you press the button, pin 2, quote unquote, sees 5 volts. And when it sees 5 volts, that triggers the LED to turn on. Well, we're doing this kind of backwards from that. So every time we push the button, pin 2 will, quote unquote, see ground. And that transition from high to low is going to trigger our LED to come on. So there's a couple things we need to do in the code, a couple things we have to change in order to facilitate this. So before we do that, let's just take a quick tour of this sketch so um, we have like an overview of what's going on in the sketch. So at the top, we've got all the comments and, you know, it describes a circuit, gives some attribution, that type of thing. And then the next block of code we come to is where they initialize and declare some variables. Then we have our void setup. And then finally, we come down to the void loop. 
So we don't have to change any of the variables since we're going to be using pin 2 for our button and pin 13 for the LED. Those can stay the same. And the button state variable isn't going to change. So now here we are, take a look at the setup. And all we do in the setup is we're setting the modes for two of the pins. We're going to say the LED pin, we want that to be an output because we want to turn an LED on. So we need a source voltage, that is 5 volts. So we want that to be an output. And then the other pin, the button pin, in this program it's set as an input because we're going to be reading a voltage. And depending on what voltage pin 2 sees is going to determine you know, whether or not we trigger the LED on or off. But what we want to do is we actually want an input pull-up. So I'm not going to get too in-depth on what the input pull-up mode is because I have another video on it and I'll make sure to link to it in the description. But what the input pull-up is doing, just quickly, is it connects internally inside the Arduino, is it will connect pin 2 to 5 volts through a 20K resistor. So basically, at all times, pin 2 will be reading 5 volts. And then if we connect it to ground, that ground is going to pull it down to a lower voltage and you know we'll have a transition from high to low. And that transition is what we're going to be using to trigger our LED to come on. All right, and again, if that doesn't make any sense whatsoever to you, make sure to watch that input pull-up video and that'll make some sense. All right, well, let's now let's jump into the loop. Got a couple things going on in the loop. First thing they're doing is setting the button state variable equal to the output of the digital read function. So basically we're, you know, it's looking at the digital read button and it's saying, hey, is the button being pressed or is it not being pressed? So for us, if it's being pressed, we're going to see ground voltage there or low. And then the next thing we do is we have an if else statement. So we're basically asking the question, is the button being pressed or not? So for us, we want to turn on the LED when the button is low. So we need to change this from high to low. So now the question we're asking in this if statement, it says button state equal equal low. So we're asking, hey, is the button being pressed? And if it is, we do a digital write and we turn our LED high. And if it's not, then we do a digital write and we turn the LED off. So while we're pressing the button, the LED turns on. When we release it, it goes back to the 5 volts because we've got it set as an input pull-up and we're not. And that's pretty much it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load this code onto both of our Arduinos. Both, same exact code on both of the Arduinos. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've loaded both of my Arduinos here with the same code. And I've got my circuit set up, so the LEDs are on pin 13 on both of my Arduinos. And I've got pin 2 hooked up to the push buttons on both Arduinos. And now I've got one of the Arduinos running on a 9-volt battery. And the other Arduino I've got connected through a USB cable to my computer. So it's just running off the power on my computer. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and press this push button. And you can see both of the LEDs turn on. And then when I release it, the LEDs go off. So again, I press the button. Pin 2 is able to see that ground voltage. Our if statement sees that the button pin, pin 2, is now ground voltage. And then it executes that digital write statement, which turns on our LED. So you can see we've connected together two Arduinos. So when I press the button, both of the Arduinos are getting that same input. And we could do this with more than two Arduinos, and it would work just fine. So I hope now if you ever need to use a single input to trigger multiple Arduinos, I hope you know how at least where to start from there. So if you like this video, you like this tutorial, please do subscribe to the show. And also, I've got uh, a couple courses over at the Open Source Hardware Group website. One is free and one is paid. Either or, if you really want to try to jumpstart your learning in Arduino, I highly recommend checking those out. And you can get that you can see those again at opensourcehardwaregroup.com, and I'll have links below in the description. Also in the description below, I'll have a link to the web page on my site that is associated this, with this tutorial. So if you want to get the schematics, download those in either a fritzing file, or if you just want to get the pictures, that, that's there too. All right, hey, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. La, la, la.